guys going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day coming to you for the weekly recap. Let's talk about it a little bit. Let's get into it. So I do one of these for every week that I'm trucking. I am leased to an 80-20 split reefer carrier. If the loads are not refrigerated, I'll let you know. Uh, I don't talk about my carrier. You got to do your own research. Find out what works for you, just like I had to. And uh, so I live in Minnesota. I like to go Minnesota out and back. That's kind of my thing. And uh, I have a fuel efficient operation. I have a 2016 Cascadia uh, Evolution I, and I pull a 2020 uh, Great Dane with a carrier unit on it. Had to think about that for a minute. I was like, hey, but yeah, it's a carrier unit. Um, so I did two loads this week. I went, uh, I went Minnesota down to Louisiana, and then Louisiana back to Indiana. This is a six-day week right here. I was still trucking on the seventh day, but my next load was like a two- or three-day load, so I couldn't squeeze it in because I only do seven days at a time or less. You'll never see me do an eight- or nine-day week. It's just, to me, it's kind of, it's not a weekly recap if it's 10 days, you know. Uh, could I could I fluff the numbers? Yeah, I could. I could do like some people do and do, you know, a 15-day week. It's like, well, that's not really a 15-day, you know, a week is seven days. So uh, this is a seven-day week right here. Um, this is the kind of the end of March, uh, getting toward the end of March. This is mid to late March right here. Uh, I'm about a week behind right now on weekly recap. So that's where we're at. So let's talk about it. Now, I talk about my variable cost. I don't talk so much about the fixed cost, but at the end, I'll kind of break down what I do and why, how I do it and how to factor in certain things. So um, I did this run. I've done it before. I did this. This is the second time I've done this. So what it is, my normal load where I go out to the East Coast and back, uh, I'd have to wait a day to get it. So I've been trying to do this because this is kind of like a quick, the east coast back quick turnaround immediately get into this and then do this but uh, i'm having trouble getting back to minnesota on these uh, louisiana runs with any kind of money in my pocket so uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to keep doing these or not i mean I'm, I'm still making good money with it but it's uh i almost wonder if i'd be better off just to sit and wait that day and get my normal run out to the east coast uh, but you know, we try things. It's it's a never-ending learning process in trucking. Uh, so let's talk about it. I did a load from Minnesota uh, down to Louisiana. That load was forty thousand pounds, uh, fifty degrees. Uh, I put I put a lot, a lot of deadhead on this week. One hundred ninety miles to go get this load from where I was uh, on my last load, and then eleven seventy-three loaded miles for. 1363 total that load paid $4,500 so not bad um, and then we come down to Louisiana and uh, I was on my way to Louisiana and they called and said hey we got a load that picks up right out of the facility you're delivering to and I was like that's freaking awesome you know it's like uh, deliver on one end of the building the next morning pull around to the other side of the building and get loaded right not that quick. Pump the brakes a little bit because here's the catch, you know. It's trucking. It's trucking. There's always a catch, you know. That's what they should tell you in truck driving school. Day one, trucking 101, there's going to be a catch. So, uh, had to have a washout, okay. Could not pick up uh, without a washout at this facility. Uh, no big deal. No big deal. There is a uh, trailer washout about 15 miles away. Sweet. They're not open on Sunday. I was delivering on Sunday afternoon, picking up first thing Monday morning. Truck wash doesn't open until like two hours after my pickup. So I had to deadhead 80 miles to a blue beacon. Yeah, 80 miles. Little, uh, yeah, right at 80 miles. I think it was like 78.8 miles or something. I wrote it down as 160 empty miles. But yeah. Yeah, what would have been zero deadhead or 30 miles of deadhead turned into 160 miles of deadhead. So that's how I spent my Sunday afternoon driving out to get a trailer washout and then coming back. Um, so, yeah, you know, if it would have been any other day, 
Uh, well, Saturday, I think the place closed at like 2 in the afternoon. So if it would have been through the week, it wouldn't have been that big a deal. But, you know, basically turned into 160 miles of deadhead on that load. That's what I put it down as. Uh, what would have been, you know, one mile of deadhead turned into 160 miles of deadhead. Uh, but that load was negative 10 degrees, 43,000 pounds. Man, that one, uh, paperwork said 43. I think it was a little more than 43. It come in super heavy. Um, so that was uh, 160 empty miles, 685 loaded miles on that load for 845 total miles. And that load paid $1,700, and it went up to Indiana. And uh, I got a load from Indiana back to Minnesota that paid okay, but uh, it, like I said, it took that was a two day run. Uh, Minneapolis, you know, I picked it up one day, delivered it the next day, uh, type thing or something like that. I, I didn't want to put it on this week, so that ends the week right there. Uh, total revenue for the week sixty two hundred dollars total revenue. My my eighty percent of that is going to be five thousand. $860. And again, this was a six day run, six days of running. Um, and it is uh, all miles 2208 on the miles, 350 miles of deadhead on this week. Whew, that's a lot of deadhead for 2208 total miles. Uh, but it is what it is um, 1858 on the loaded and 16% deadhead. Uh, that's how it's going to be in a low freight volume market. You're just going to deadhead more just the way it is. I'm, I'm used to it at this point. I'm ready for it. Um, I don't like doing it, but it is what it is, you know, because you got to burn those hours. You got to pay that IFTA. You got to pay that fuel. You got to pay that maintenance. You know, uh, empty miles are not free miles. That's why I'm a big fan of going all miles whenever I talk about this stuff, you know. Because you can make it look real good. You know, if I took that all that deadhead out, uh, I'll break it down for you here. 280 all miles. 280 a mile, all miles. Felt good about that. That's 224, my 80%. 333 a loaded mile. So see, if I would have cut out all that deadhead and come on here and told you, hey, I got 333 all, you know, I got 300, excuse me, I got $3.33 a mile this week. Well, that's not the true, that's not the, as Paul Harvey would say, that's not the rest of the story. The rest of the story is 280 a mile, because that's all miles. That's really how I got to factor this. I've uh, been doing it that way ever since I started these weekly recaps, because let's face it, that's just how it is. Deadhead miles have to count. They are not free miles. So let's break down the variable cost. I spent 1143 in diesel. Thankfully, diesel is coming down a little bit right now. I think uh, some geopolitical things uh, are happening where uh, some oil is uh, getting used from other countries right now, and it's kind of evening out the global supply chain a little bit. That's that's kind of what I'm seeing, but if you're seeing something different, let me know. Uh, I spent 175 on reefer. That load going down is 50 degree continuous, and it was very cold out. So. Uh, you know, the thing with reefer trailers is it seems like they, you know, they're meant to cool, but they also have to heat as well. But it, to me, it seems like they use more fuel when they're heating. You know, I, maybe that's just me, but uh, I think that's kind of the way it is, you know, like even my, even at my house, you know, when we're heating, we're using more fuel than if we're, you know, if we're cooling, it seems like. But 175 on reefer fuel, that's a lot of reefer fuel for me. I was pretty surprised when I added all this up and I seen it was 175. Uh, $41 on def for the week, $26. I scaled both loads on that. And uh, that brings total variable cost to 1385. There you go. 1385, uh, bring over my 5860 to the truck, subtract the 1385 in variable cost. And that leaves me $4,475 left to do what I have to do with, I subtracted $450 for the maintenance account, leaving me $4,025 after maintenance cost, um, or you know, putting something back for a maintenance uh, situation. And uh, that's it for the week, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed the, the rundown, the, the breakdown, the weekly recap. Um, fuel cost for the week was $0.52 cents for the week on fuel costs. So um, 
you know, with it's kind of a it's kind of a compounding thing right now. Fuel prices are coming down a little bit, and it's getting warmer. You know, like uh, Minnesota's still really cold. Wisconsin was still really cold. Iowa was still really cold. But once I got down to like Missouri, uh, Arkansas, and started running through those states, we was doing good. We was doing good. Fuel economy way up because you know uh, diesel likes a little bit warmer weather. You know, when it's really really cold out, it just you know, um, don't get as good fuel economy. It's the winter blend fuel. It's the, you know, denser air. There's a few things that has to do with, uh, with that. So, um, summer's rolling here. It's coming at us real quick. So fuel economy will get a little better, hopefully. And, um, yeah, so 52 cents a mile for the week. Not bad. Um, I'm probably averaging 50 for the month. Uh, so far now when i do my next weekly recap i'll give you the monthly uh fuel cost but uh, i've been in that like 50 cents range 50 cents a mile range uh for a while now so and someone asked me that that is including ifta uh that is just basically what i spent on fuel uh divided by the miles i ran so that that's that's what that is um uh, you know I, i'm not you know when someone asks me what I paid for fuel, you know, if does included, I don't, you know, like if, if I say, you know, like right now, my goal, my goal right now is to pay less than $3 a gallon minus IFTA. That's my goal. But when I just talk fuel cost, if does included, I feel there's no reason to take it out and skew the numbers. But like just a personal goal of mine right now is $3 or under now, I haven't been able to do it this week, but, um, you know, I bought some fuel in Illinois earlier in the week for, uh, you subtract out the if that was 303 a gallon. I bought some fuel in Pennsylvania that was like uh, 308 minus if. So I'm getting real close to that $3. The fuel will just keep coming down a little bit. Um, I'll get there. But that's that's kind of a personal goal of mine, and that's what I'm working on. So uh, that was it for the week, guys. I will um, continue to do these as long as everybody wants me to do them. So be sure to smash that like button. Let me know you, you want it and uh, keep doing them. If you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing to the channel. Also, check out my second channel. Link in the pinned uh, comment down below. Uh, Diabetic Trucker, also known as uh, Trucking with Diabetes. So I'm playing around with the name on that a little bit right now. But it's the same channel with the same message. So go check that out for me if you would. And thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, people are more important than trucking. Take care of each other out there.